So our next speaker is Andrew Papa. Uh, he's the CTO of IBRM, and he's going to be talking about content protection and the Netflix Dash. Hello. Okay. Hello, everyone. So. Um, Quick introduction. Uh, well, first, quick thank you uh, to Alex and Ali to putting all this event together and bring all the great minds in one room to share the knowledge. So I'm very encouraged, and it's a great opportunity for learning. So uh, we will talk about the DRM. <laughs> and the DRM, I will say, is no longer forward. <laughs> You know, for no, no longer full letter word. Uh, it has been improved dramatically over the time. Uh, and I would say, um, you know, with a great adoption in the industry and improvements uh, and deployments on the different client sites, uh, bringing the DRM to the native, nat support native platforms natively. Um, end users doesn't even notice that they're playing the DRM content. So it's, it's quite remarkable today. Uh, and it's also essential puzzle uh, in the whole ecosystem and infrastructure for the studios uh, to deliver the valuable assets to the end users. And now, as when we speak about the HDR and UHD content, it's also very essential. So, how that all relates to the Dash and what Dash does and uh, what is the standards there. So let's uh, uh, deep dive into that. So uh, Dash IF uh, do not intend to specify full end-to-end -end DRM system, uh, rather to provide framework for uh, multiple DRMs to protect Dash content with a single common uh, key. Um, that's a very important aspect. So today uh, we can use single key encrypt content once and then distribute it to the multiple uh, platforms which are DRM specific. So uh, common encryption standard uh, on the other hand specifies uh, how you need to encrypt content specifically. In the Dash IF, we specify protection system specific information and the information which you need to place in the MPD, the manifest. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the uh, content encryption specification is, uh, specifies how exactly the content is encrypted. So, uh, Common encryption specify the uh, the null structure video uh, and encrypting the content with the IES 128CTR uh, mode. It also supports CBC mode, uh, and now that's uh, that's one of the challenge which uh, industry facing today uh, in terms of the uh, efficiency and in terms of the uh, actually price uh, because uh, you have to consider you know how you scale the encrypted content delivery to the end users and it affects the storage because you have to store different types of uh, encrypted content in the CTR mode or CBC mode. So uh, there is a notion right now that uh, we have to work with the Dash IF uh, to specify also the CBC mode. So uh, I'm sure there will be more work to be done on that sense. And uh, ideally, we would like to see one encryption mode and to remove all the hassles related to uh, storing different instances of the encrypted content. It also specify um, support for decryption of the single representation by multiple DRM systems, key rotation, and the XML syntax in, syntaxes uh, to expressing the uh, default key IDs attributes and the PSSH elements in the uh, MPD. So simple uh, diagram basically showing uh, the essential parts and the components. So we have the encryptor, uh, 
uh, which encrypts the assets. The dash clear content goes as an input, and common key ID and the common uh, ISCTR, which is 128-bit key. At the end, we receive the MPD with all required signaling inside, um, with the uh, protection specific uh, system header and the uh, encrypted content. It supports uh, full sample encryption and also subsample encryption. So the baseline uh, technology which is used uh, is the um, uh, content protection descriptor in the manifest which specify URI uh, for signaling of specific DRM is used, which means uh, you can have the MPD with a different uh, signaling information related to each DRM system. It is a play ready, wide one, fair play, and then uh, players by fetching the MPD knows which information to use in order to acquire the license. It's also uh, specify encryption parameters and default uh, key IDs, license acquisition data, keys for each DRM in the format of the protection uh, system specific box. Uh, there is also um, a working group which uh, works with the uh, content protection uh, information exchange format and uh, that allows uh, multiple entities in the, in the ecosystem to exchange the uh, DRM keys which are required to protect the content. Now the content protection information exchange format uh, basically, document containing the keys and DRM information um, and uh, also provides the secure way how to exchange this information. Make sure it's all encrypted and authenticated where each entity can receive the required information while they processing the content. Um, some high level uh, information flow and uh, which uh, talks about how to acquire the DRM license. So the player basically receives the MPD uh, which is manifest, uh, do the verification of the system ID which means uh, it checks which DRM does it support, takes the initialization segment with the default key IDs contact the license server, providing all the required information to the license server, to the specific license server, Play Ready, Wide Wine, or Fur Play, return the license response back to the player. Now the DRM client, uh, this is just an abstraction, it could be uh, run on the natively or the CDM or uh, in other ways. That the entity responsible for actually uh, receiving the license and the decrypting the content. Uh, today, for example, can be done in the trusted execution environment, specifically important for the UHD content. So all that uh, key decryption and the uh, sample decryption can be uh, run in the trusted execution environment and then provided through the secure pipeline back to the player to decode the samples. So if we're talking in the, about the uh, MPD, um, so the MPD contains the signaling of the content uh, encryption and key management methods used to help the uh, receiving client uh, to determine if it can possible to play back the content. So the MPD elements uh, to be used uh, are the content dec uh, decryption elements, as I mentioned, it specify uh, which specifically the DRM is used, and it used the uh, proprietary protection system specific header box. So in that in that place uh, specified either it's a play ready wide wine or or fair play, and that what used by player uh, in order to request the license from the license servers. 
There is also uh, one topic which is uh, specified by Dash IF is the uh, transport security in HTTP based delivery, basically using the HTTPS. However, there is some impact of using HTTPS, but it's now today it's mandated, so there is no way how we can avoid that. But to keep in mind that uh, there is some, you know, some concerning points, and one specific are, you know, uh, the uh, efficiency. It's sort of like redundancy, right? Because we we encrypt the actual samples; they already encrypted. There is no way how you can get to the samples, and by also you add additional latency for every single uh, request. Just to prove the point, uh, today in our company we support uh, the Dash common encryption and uh, CPICs across all our platforms and widely used by all our customers in production. So today I would say it's already reality. Uh, there is few things which needs to be improved and in my particular opinion is the uh, encryption mode, CBC versus CTR. And I think we will be very in good shape in order to uh, move towards a single uh, encrypted format. I will be sure that's conclude my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them.